All righty. Welcome. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for this week's episode of the podcast. And I'm absolutely delighted to have Tyler Williams and John Hoskins from ASI Foods to talk to us today about audits and passing an audit and the whole audit process. So guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hmm? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm John Hoskins. I'm the operations manager here at ASI Food Safety. Um, I help manage the entire certification process on the SQF side of our business, um, as well as oversee some of the day-to-day -day operations um, that, that make us function. Um, I have a background in the pharmaceutical industry, um, as well as you know some, some general food experience and working in uh, the brewing industry um, prior to joining ASI. Um, I do have SQF lead auditor training, um, preventive controls, HACCP training, and all that as well. Excellent. I am Tyler Williams. I am the Chief Technical Officer here at ASI. Uh, I've been with the company for about five years now. Um, I, too, have all the certifications uh, you can think of uh, that involve food safety, PCQI, HACCP, uh, Serve Safe, um, SQF. I am a lead auditor as well. Um, and, uh, you know, all of those things. Uh, I used to oversee all the certification process until John came on board. Now I do more uh, R&D type stuff such as building and developing trainings and things like that. Um, so I'm really happy to be here and talk to you guys today about audits. Excellent. Well, we're super happy to have you here. And when, as you know, like as we talk today, there are a lot of listeners who are out there trying to understand what an audit is, why they need to pass it, what it does for them, and that sort of thing. So what do you wish like people knew when they go into the audit process? Um, just the amount of resources that it takes, I think. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, when they get into it, uh, they, they get this request from their customers, really. It's all customer driven, right? It's driven down the supply chain. And when they get into it, they think, oh, you know, I just need this certificate to make my customer happy. And they don't do, you know, maybe the amount of research they should as to really how much time it takes to kind of build these programs, implement them, and really get your food safety programs going. Um, and now, obviously, that it differs from, from individual and company to company. But um, most of all, I, I, I think people underestimate the amount of resources it really takes to have an effective food safety system at your company. And yeah, just to add on to what, what John was saying uh, with the resources and, and the time that it takes, it also, um, from a, a CB perspective and for when you're planning your audit, it does take some time to, to make that whole process happen, especially if you're at a GFSI level uh, certification, um, because you normally have some sort of document review before uh, your facility assessment. Um, so to just play off of what John was saying, uh, definitely plan ahead and have a game plan. It's not uh, unlikely for a facility to start planning for an audit a year in advance. Um, so whether that's getting the, the resources, uh, such as the people, the, the documentation, uh, the monetary things together, but also just taking the steps to plan for when that audit's going to happen uh, in correlation to with how things are going at your facility. So when we talk about resources around here, you know, there's time, talent, and treasure, right? Mm, so it's kind of, you can lump it all into those three buckets. And what, um, if you had to apportion out, maybe not how much in terms of like dollar value, because, you know, audits all cost money. I, th I think people are always shocked when I tell them audits cost money. <laughs> I don't know why, but audits cost money. There you go. Heard it here first. Uh, um, but they also cost time and they cost talent. Like people, you got to put good people on this. So can you talk a little bit about not just the broad resources requirements, but maybe those three buckets of resources? Sure. Yeah. I, I think um, time, since that's the first one there, I think um, like, like Tyler had mentioned, you know, a lot of people will start planning for this a year ahead because it just takes that much time a lot of times to get everything set. Um, you know, you might find a consultant to help you get your processes started and teach you everything you need to know. Um, or maybe you have somebody that you can hire, you know, from the streets that's, that has all the experience and you don't need a consultant. 
either way, you know, you're going to want somebody there with the experience to help you get those systems set up. And that's going to take some time. Um, and, and you have to, you know, if, if you don't have those people on staff, you're going to want to find them. So there's time in that, then you're going to need to get them trained and set up in your company and get them to understand your processes because they haven't worked at your company and your processes are going to be different than other processes that they've experienced. Yeah. And, and the same thing. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, people, but that kind of correlates with time. If you're using someone internally, uh, say your QA person, and you give them six months to set up an SQF program, and they have to do everything that they're supposed to be doing normally, there's no way that's going to happen. If they do, that person needs a raise, right? <laughs> so, um, and, and it, we see those types of situations all the time where the burden gets put on this QA person who already has a full-time job, and now they have to implement new procedures and processes in place, um, which they just don't have the time to. And, th and, that's, and that's what we're talking about there. So, um, you know, the time is important. The people that you have are important. And then what was the, what was the last one? The last one's treasure. Like, you know, I talk, when I talk about how much it costs to get an audit, honestly, you know, you have to, you have to pay for an auditor to come. There's a set fee. It's with you guys. I don't know what your fees are. It's probably based on the size of the facility or number of facilities or number of days or whatever it is. And you can talk a little bit about your fee schedule if you'd like. But I think the biggest cost is how much you have to pay somebody to prep for the audit. Hmm. Exactly. And, and you would actually, if, if we just told you the cost of the audit, uh, normally people are like, okay, let's sign up. But it's those auxiliary costs that that go into it. So if you're paying for a consultant, if you're paying to hire an extra employee to help out, if you are uh, have to fix your floors or fix things because those are the audit requirements, if you have to get uh, backflow prevention devices on, on your water lines, any even all those little small things that you have to do because those are audit requirements, those add up. And so if you don't, if you want to try to get that perfect score, every little thing that you need to do at your facility obviously costs money um, to a certain extent. Um, so yes, it, it is, it is uh, a burdensome, but if you already have uh, most of those things in place, uh, for example, if you're getting third party GMP audits, then you're already pretty much, you know, more than halfway there. So the cost will go down a little bit. But if you're a brand new facility starting out, uh, it's it's going to be a lot more work. Yeah. I, sorry, I think the, the talent portion too, I, we maybe glance over that a little bit, but not only do you want somebody that's, you know, you don't want talent just for running your food safety systems. You need talented people that are working the production lines too, right? People that understand the processes, people that are monitoring those CCPs, if, you know, if you have them. Um, and, and those, all those people, all those production workers need to be trained as well um, in, in different areas. So, you know, we, you really want to make sure too that you have the correct talent just across the board. You know, your management is committed to it too. Um, and, and really everybody, you know, I think that's a big thing that SQF is going to start this next year is food safety culture. And they're trying to build it across the board in all these companies that had everybody buy into a food safety culture. I think that's incredibly important, you know, because we talk a lot about here, you, you pretty much live or die on your culture. Like that's at the, at the end of the day, if you don't have the right culture, pounds of product out the door, it doesn't matter. Exactly. It doesn't matter at all. Okay. So that's really interesting. So, so then talk to me, you know, you're, you've, you've committed to the audit and you're getting it done. What are some of, this is kind of a compound question, but what are some of the toughest parts of an audit? From, your, um, from the person who's getting audited. But then I'm also interested to find out what are some of the toughest parts of an audit from y'all's perspective? <laughs> uh, I will say from the customer's perspective, what I see them struggle with the most is actually uh, the root cause analysis and the corrective actions at the end of the audit. So once they've already gone through, uh, they, the nerves are already gone, they know what their score is, now it's just time to correct the things that are wrong, right? Um, and with that, it's just a lot of times what we're seeing on our end is very simple, um, you know, root causes. You know, this was, we, for, we just forgot to do it. Well, tell us why you forgot to do it. Uh, well, you know, it was this employee's first day and yada, yada, yada. And then you get down to the point where it's okay, this is no longer just we forgot to do it, but it's an it's a onboarding training issue that we're having. And so now we've gotten it down to that. And that is one of the, the biggest issues I see the site struggling with 
at least from, from our end, is what we see. So those, cor those corrective actions, uh, what they're doing to fix the problem, and then the root cause, why, why that problem happened. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I, I think really determining, you know, an effective root cause is very essential for an audit because not only are you fixing what was found in your audit this year, you're setting yourself up for success in future years too. I, I think that's super interesting. I was just taking some notes and, you know, I mean, because I've heard the same thing. It's like, oh, well, we forgot to do it. Well, you know, in in our line of work, there is no forgetting. Forgetting doesn't exist, <laughs> right? And I wonder how much of it is being bold, you know, and being bold and asking yourself tough questions. Do you see people willing to ask themselves the tough questions? I think, I think unfortunately, what we see a lot of time is, is people just checking the boxes, right? They're doing the audit because they have to, not because they want to. Who wants to do an audit? Well, people like us, because this is what we love to do. <laughs> but other, besides us weirdos in the room, then uh, it's just, you know, people are normally just checking a box. And, um, you know, so they're not, they're not asking themselves those questions. They're not diving into uh, what's the real reason behind getting the audit. You know, we want to provide... We want them to provide the safest and highest quality food possible, and um, you know this is this is how we can help you do that. I think that makes that makes a ton of sense. So then, now talk to me about you know about what you guys go through on an audit. Uh, like, what's it like from your perspective? <sighs> I mean, I think it may play along with that a little bit. Just the checking the boxes thing. It's right. You know, there's a lot of stress, and we always acknowledge that. I think every auditor knows that you're going to a facility and there's, it's going to be stressful. Right. Um, and it's, it's just one of those things where we wish that customers would understand that we're not there to catch them doing something wrong. We're there to try to help them, you know, improve and, you know, really improve the food supply as a, as a whole. Um, it's not, we're not there to be like, Hey, you're doing this wrong. I caught you. It's, it's a, Hey, here's some somewhere you can improve. Yeah, and, and I just to add on to what John was saying, sometimes I, I think, well, definitely the toughest uh, part of being an auditor is just hearing that emotion from the other side of the room and then being very defensive about their program because we're, we're basically calling their baby ugly if we go in there and write a bunch of nonconformances, right? So uh, we, we definitely, that's not our intentions, like John was saying. We just, we want you guys to be better. We want you guys to, to follow the, the requirements of whatever standard you're getting. I think that's super, you know, I think that's super interesting because you're right, the, the habitual defensiveness, uh, you know, that, that people have can really, is really reflected in a culture. You know, I'm, I, I tell my clients, your, your culture is defined by your ability to stop the line without fear of uh, repercussions, without anybody telling you don't, you know, like you're wrong for doing that. And I think when you get the audit results back, one of, the, one of the toughest things for me when I was an auditor is people who got all defensive. But then if you take a step back, you can see that defensive play out uh, through yep. all the processes in their business. Uh. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think another, another part of that food safety culture too, and this goes along with you know, a tough part of our job is management commitment. Like I, I think I mentioned earlier, um, you know, even if you have the most committed group of employees and practitioner and QA team, um, if, if your management isn't supporting you in the way that they should to, to effectively implement and maintain all these food safety systems, then, you know, you're not going to succeed. Um, and that, that's something that we do see occasionally. And, and that's just, it's, it's tough to overcome and, you know, it, it's really just a shame when we see that. Yeah, no, I think they're, they're in, I've been having a lot of conversations, as you can imagine, with people around PPE, right, personal protective equipment. And I am of the opinion that PPE is a learned and learnable skill, right? But it has to be, it's one of those things that we're constantly reinforcing. We've all been on the floor and been like, ah, I did this wrong with my PPE, right? You know, we've all been there. Mm -hmm. And 
I um I see a lot I, there. I find it so unfortunate when I go to places where management ref really reflects how committed they are to the food safety program by how how well they conform to the PPE program, and sometimes they just really really don't. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's funny. That's a good example though. You know, and that that really does help. Um, that 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 is really one of those things that we. Uh, that I always looked for when I was an auditor. So, okay, so now we've got some of that cultural conversation and that sort of thing. So talk us, talk, talk the audience through what the process is from your perspective and how somebody who's gonna get an audit can set themselves up for success. So we already talked about, you know, like the, you know, like planning for a year, don't, put this on top of somebody who already has a full-time job. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty important. Really have those hard conversations about culture, but in like the nitty gritty of it, um, what's, you know, like, so what's the process? They decide they want an audit and then what? Uh, the, the first thing you should do is, is call the, whatever certification body you want. Uh, for example, ASI uh, is, our, is our certification body. Um, you would call us up, um, you know, we would talk you through that process, but what we would say is, okay, first, first things first, we're going to have you register. And, and this is for a GFSI level audit, right? Okay. So then what we'll do is we'll have you register with that, that scheme. We'll have, um, <clears throat> we'll send you over to our scheduling department after we get all of your locations information and thing and everything. And we'll decide how long that audit is going to be. Um, we'll decide the dates of the audit um, and everything like that. Once that happens, there's a desk review. Um, that desk review is when the auditor will review uh, all of your documentation, either offsite or onsite. It's your preference. Typically, people like to do it offsite, especially uh, now with COVID. Um, obviously, that's the number one choice. Um, and so, what will happen is that auditor will review all of your documentation. They will look at everything to make sure that you have have enough information there that we can conduct an audit and that all the important pieces are there because what we don't want to do is go there the day of and we'll look at everything at once and then wow you guys don't have anything and now the site's just wasted their money so uh, once that doc review is over you'll get a set of non-conformances you'll have a set amount of time to fix those non-conformances um, typically it's before your facility audit um, and then once we go into do that facility audit um, the same thing again, the auditor is going to uh, write some non-conformances. They're going to uh, submit those to you. You typically will have 30 days, uh, depending on the scheme, to correct those non-conformances. And um, with that, um, if everything goes through, um, the auditor will review it. There's a technical review process, which uh, is a back office review of everything. And then there, lastly, there's a certification review. So once you submit those corrective actions, it goes through three reviews uh, before that audit is finalized. And once that audit is finalized, you then have your score and your rating, which you can go take to your suppliers, um, your, your customers, your retailers, whoever it might be, and show off that you've passed the audit. And then uh, you have to do the same thing the next year. <laughs> And then we just start it all over again. <laughs> right. And I think one of the things that people don't realize is that you guys have this process because you yourselves are audited, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be accredited to perform these audits as well. So yeah, we have, we have a yearly, um, they call it an assessment, but we, it's an audit. Yes. We get audited each year um, just to make sure that we, we are managing our audits correctly, right? And that our management systems are in place as well. Um, so yes, we also feel it too. So we do have that perspective of, of a customer of ours, right? Um, and I think that that helps us too when we're, we're out there to try to help our customers improve their, their food safety systems. So when you guys get audited, and I know this is a bit of an off the cuff question, what's the toughest part for you? Uh I think, you know, it's, it's with uh, any audit, you know, um, I think there's some interpretation issues that, that happen every once in a while. Um, a lot of, you know, not every auditor is the same, um, unfortunately, and there's going to be some differences. Uh, however, you know, we, as being an auditing company, we know to never fight the auditors. Uh, there, you know, uh, we just take that as, 
hey, this is a way that we can improve our system and we, we make changes to improve it and, and then move on. Yeah, and I, like that. I, I would add to um, resources also, you know, we're, we're paying for these audits too. <laughs> Right. It's almost like auditing is a business. <laughs> right. And so, I mean, I think that that's, I think it's just really important to, to know, you know, and I, and, and we talked about this a little bit beforehand, but you guys are, you're, you're out there, you're getting audited and then you have people you audit and there's this like kind of whole chain right. that we create where at the best of it, we're all driving towards continuous process improvement. Oh. And, and not only that, not only that, but we also have benchmark standards and standard owners and all of these other individuals that have input and say into everything that we do as well. So there, there's very specific reasons why your certification body does things the way it does, because we're trying to follow all the rules just like you guys. It's not to drive people insane. Huh. No. Who knew? <laughs> whole checks and balances, and we are not at the top of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard that. I heard that. All right. So that's um. So so I'm gonna ask you like one final question, and then you're gonna tell us how to get in touch in touch with us. But if you had like maybe one summary piece of advice uh, that you know people could people could walk away with, what would it be? Hmm? Oh, that's a good one. One, one piece of advice, hmm. I would say be kind to your auditors because they're people too. <laughs> oh, I love that. Mm. I, I would say for me, um, communication is key, right? You want to just be open and honest with your auditor. You want to be able to communicate clearly. You want to be able to communicate quickly. The, you know, the quicker you can communicate with your CV and your auditor to get things set up, the quicker we're going to be able to get you an audit. The, you know, the, the better you are communicating during an audit, the, the quicker the audit's going to go. Um, communication is something that is overlooked and it's a very important part of, of an audit. And, and yeah, I will just to add on to what John said, because I think that's a really good point. Um, just being honest with your auditor and this, your CB throughout, once again, we're not trying to, to catch you guys doing something wrong. We're, you know, trying to help you out. So don't try to cover up that one little minor nonconformance because then the rest of the audit, the auditor is going to assume you're, you're hiding something, you know, be honest, say, Hey, we don't have this, but we have everything else. And that will look way much, that will look way better to the auditor than just trying to hide one little nonconformance. That makes, yeah, I get that. That makes a lot of sense. It's always, you know, we talk a lot about it, it, to be being in your truth and telling the truth and it's really easy uh, yeah. we almost don't uh, sometimes we almost don't know that we're lying uh, <laughs> but you've got to really reflect and be like oh wait okay <laughs> maybe maybe we do need to maybe we do need to tell the auditor that <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right well Excellent. So tell us, you guys are a CB, a certifying body. Um, and so if we have people who are uh, listening, who are interested in getting themselves like an SQF audit, I'm sure you also do BRC audits and other kinds of audits and those. All our friends, I, I, I think of it as a whole team of people at GFSI. Uh, tell us how to get in touch with you and what their next steps would be so that they can start down this path. Um, Absolutely. So our website is the best place to get all the information you need. It's asifood.com. Um, and that will have everybody's uh, contact information. It'll have all of our services that we offer, anything from training to consulting to, to GMP audits to uh, the GFSI audits. Um, and then individually, if you need anything from there, um, you should be able to find all of our information, Tyler's information, my information on the website. Um, so that's the best place. Um, if you are browsing the SQFI website, we're listed on there as well. Um, but the main thing is asifood.com and you'll get everything you need. Perfect. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking some time out of your afternoon to talk with me about getting your getting your audit and passing your audit. That's, of course, the point. Um, <laughs> and I, am, I, I really hope our listeners will be in touch. All right. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks. Bye-bye.